Well, Helen, I'll tell you, what has really scared me about this whole thing is, you know, digital age has come with, you know, so many things, mm -hmm. big data, you know, and all of this networking yeah. and all of that that we never used to know. Um, but today on the show, uh, we, we have, we have, we have, I um, think we have able hands. See, I'm glad that <laughs> we now we're hearing, we have, yes. Ah, you we, made it sound we. like it's only Helen that needed to learn. About digital age. Okay. You want a, you want a <laughs> confession from me, Helen, don't you? <laughs> okay. We we actually you know, um getting on to the second the second guest who's yes. already standing by. He's yes. a Rotarian just like you. Just like me. Mm. And that's uh Jide Ogunleye. Okay. Uh Jide, thanks for staying online. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Thank Great. you for having me. Great, Jide. Now, is a bit discussed. Ah, okay. Oh. Uh, I hope that uh, well, you are the tech guys. You should you should be able to clean it up somehow. <laughs> so, uh, Jide, social media, if you can hear me, is one of the most powerful marketing tools at the moment. Yes. Uh, you're right, John. Always right. And statistics have it that some 90% of young adults use social media to communicate with brands. Soon, this platform will become the most important marketing strategy for all target markets. Well, Jide will be helping us understand how social media is used to give a boost to the world economy, to networking, to career opportunities, and form new friendships across the world. We are being joined by Jide Ogunleye, who is co-founder HomePod, an estate management solution, a BSc holder in computer science from the Lagos State University. That excites me. Yeah, Jide has his expertise in business process automation and digital transformation with special focus on creating digital products and services used by everyday consumers. Again, our guest is a Rotarian and a Christian who is consumed with the passion to give back. And part of giving back, I guess, is being here today to shed more light on our subject matter. So, like I said, Jide, we're happy to have you with us. Welcome. Welcome to the show, Jide. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you once again for having me. Okay. And our first question, it doesn't take too much formalities. Even the smallest space in your living room is all that is needed today to join the bandwagon of techies who transverse the cyberspace, making loads of money. What exactly does it take to get it right on the social media sphere? Um, so it's a number of things. Um, but the first thing you could do is to ask your question, how do you want to play in that space? Um, do you want to play as an influencer? Do you want to play as a business owner? Do you want to play as a brand ambassador? Um, so once you identify how you want to play, right, then the next thing you want to do is you want to go find out um, what your competitions are doing, who your competition are. So you want to be a, a, a brand ambassador and or an influencer. Then you want to go out and identify what the top influencers, you know, so identifying more some sort of competitive, you know, strategy um, to know what your competitors are doing. That can guide you, you know, on how best you can play because then you're able to learn, you know, from their successes, you know, and then take from their winning points, improve on where they're not improving on and use that to create some sort of, you know, competitive advantage or some unique selling point or proposition for yourself. Wow. Hmm. So, Jide, while I am snoring in my bed at night, my neighbor's son probably is busy burning the midnight oil, surfing for success and making loads of money. Is this trend generational or am I missing something? Um, so you're not missing anything. Um, you're not missing anything. Um, but they, what they're simply doing is they're trying to make the best of the opportunities, you know, that we have today, that they have today, that social media has brought into the picture. And one of the key things that you have to be able to do if you don't want to miss out on this is to also be able to identify what are these trends, right? You need to be able to identify what these trends are. For example, you hear a lot of talk around cryptocurrencies, for example. You know, so you want to identify what these trends are so that you can then latch latch onto them. If you don't identify the trends, 
um, then you may be missing out, you know, and that's what you call formal fear of missing out. So you don't want to miss out. You need to identify the trends and you need to be able to latch onto these trends to be able to ensure that you're getting the max value from what social media has got to give um, today. Okay, he, he talked about whether it is generational yes. because the younger people seem to be making, um, I mean, doing more business in that sphere. Um, they talk about getting in the traffic and managing their content. Please tell us, what are these? And how does this translate to dollars, Cash naira, money. Cobor, and what have you? <laughs> okay, so jumping into the traffic, like I said earlier on, you know, um, one of the key things about social media is content, right? And one of the ways in which you can actually make some money out of, out of this traffic is to be able to identify the content to make, right? So everyone, when you go on social media today, it's content. So it's largely content, right? So you have the consumers who are going to fetch, who are going to consume the content, and then you have the content creators who are creating, creating the content. The people that are cashing out are the ones that are creating the content. And I spoke about them earlier. They are the influencers. Right. You know, you also have those that are businesses who are also cashing out by identifying some sort of niche. Um, the previous speaker, Bio, spoke about, you know, creating and identifying opportunities. Right. For you spoke about a restaurant um, who needs to create some sort of online presence. That kind of restaurant would also have a presence in social media where he wants to put out, you know, his content, um, which is products or service related content. And then the other consumers who are consuming the content then get to pay for these things. So content, creating content is key, right? And you want to cash out, create unique content that adds value, create engaging content that also adds value, and then grow your numbers, because when you have the numbers is when you have the leverage. So you have a million followers and try to get verified. Hmm. So it's largely driven by content. So cash out, you need to create the content. Yeah, well, uh, certainly, GD, th this can't be everything it can be all of the 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 the, the secret trade sec, the trade secrets like yes, you said yes yes and could you others. could you what are the tools could you tell us a bit about what tools and strategies yeah. that uh, we may use for making the most of all of these acquaintances if i hear you correctly you're speaking to yeah you're speaking to what strategy you could use to make use of you know these acquaintances um, quite a number of strategies um the first one um, if, if you're already on the platform, right, um, is to listen. You need to listen to your community. You need to know exactly what they're saying, right? You need to understand what they want. You know, we're currently in an age whereby um, before before this age that we're in, it used to be just push. You know, consumers didn't really have the power, you know. Um, so it's whatever the brands give you that you take. But today, um, you have a lot of competition. Um, audience are, are more informed. Um, so for you to win, uh, one of the strategies that you have to have is to listen. So you need to be seen as a brand that listens, right? You know, and there are tools that can help you to listen, you know, so you have listening tools. And the other thing you need to do as a strategy is to have some sort of engagement strategy, right? How do you engage with your audience, right? And the other part is content, you know. So you have different kinds of content. You have different kinds of content formats. Um, so you have to, you know, look into your competition, know those who are there. Um, and you need to also look at the platforms because um, not all platforms is best for you or your brand or your business, right? So you also need to identify the best platform that is best suited for you. you when you identify those platforms, you need to also identify the best type of content. For example, video is, is one of the most engaging type of content today. And as we all know, attention span is dropping really quickly. Um, so. And there's so much content to be consumed, right? So you need to be precise and concise, and you need to be um, engaging. So as a strategy, you want to be able to listen, you want to be able to engage, but you also want to be able to measure, right? You need to be able to have a, have a metric for measurement, because I said earlier that increasing your numbers can help you actually cash out. So you need to also be able to measure your performance and see how you're doing over time. You need to also be able to measure when is the best time for me to post. When is the best time for my people to engage with me? I engage with my content. So you listen, you engage, right? And then you measure. 
that's a strategy that can work. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm beginning to see success already on the horizon, John. Yeah. Are you? Now, how much of my time would it take to be as successful, to be as successful as the big social media gurus that we hear about around the globe, you know, making loads of money from social media? How much of my time is needed? Okay, so how, would, how much of the time will it take? And I think that varies. Um, it varies for, for different people um, or different brands. Um, but one of the things that is most important is to stay consistent, right? It's important that you stay consistent. I'll tell you a quick story. There's a guy called um, La CCLN, and we used to create very funny content on social media. He went so viral about two years ago. Um, and the first time I came in contact with that guy was a video that someone shared with me, and it was in traffic. Um, but I found that interesting. And then I went to check the guy's profile, and I realized he has been creating that same type of content for over a year. So it took about a year, you know, before he did something, and someone in French posted it, and, and it went viral, right? On the flip side, you also have some other guys who start fairly very quickly, and within a short period of time, say maybe a popular celebrity, this is the second video they ever make, right? And put it on their platform, and that person has about 10 million followers, right? Um, they call it blown, right? So the person gets blown within a short time. But what's important is to remain consistent, right? You know, if you're doing a particular type of content, create a niche for yourself and remain consistent. So there's no exact answer to how long it will take, right? Um, but one thing that is important that you should go with it's to remain consistent. So you remain consistent. That because the, the journey of a thousand yeah. miles begins. Yeah, mm. so remain consistent. Yeah. Now, uh, before we let you go, Jide, could you just, in a minute or so, tell us what future do you see, especially for our techie children and the young adults who are so wrapped up in this new trend? Okay, so, um, so I say future... Um, there are pros and cons to it, right? Um, so I see a future where um, we have new types of um, opportunity that we didn't have before, right? In terms of growth, um, in terms of um, job opportunities for them, right? So um, they begin to get better job opportunities, right? Um, like getting, being content creators, being graphic designers, um, being video editors. Um, so job opportunities for a lot of the a lot of the younger ones, um, but the Downside to that is there's a lot. There's going to be a lot of distractions. There's already a lot of noise, right? And there's a lot of. There's going to be a lot of depression um, because you see a lot of people posting fake lives. Um, you have new types of role models who you know put up some sort of fake lives, and people who follow those lives and they are misled. Um, so the negative side side of that is a lot of people will be misled. Um, some you know a lot of people will be misled. But the good side to it is that it offers a lot of opportunity, um, new skills, new platforms, new social media platforms would also emerge, um, and there will be more opportunities for brands to be able to reach reach um, consumers, you know, even more more directly than they used to today. I, I don't want to mention names, you know, but it, it blew up. It just blew up in our faces a few years ago when a celebrity, you know, a lady in Nigeria made it so big via social media. Um, how effective is marketing and advertisement? How does it play out? How does it get round, you know, to helping the, um, the person involved to make loads of money? How does it work out? Advertisement and all of it. Okay, so um, I'm not sure I heard you correctly because of the um, noise. Um, but if I think I heard you, so how does marketing play out in this mix? Exactly. Um, one is the dynamics of marketing has changed, right? Um, one of the things that's going on right now is that you're having a lot of data that is being generated. So there's more information about every individual consumers. Um, so one, as for marketing, the impact is you're able to get more direct returns on your investment because you could tell specifically um, who's seeing your adverts. You could target more directly, right, because of the kinds of data you have. You can decide to target someone who watches this show every morning, um, you know, online. You could decide to target people who ride bicycles, you know. So it's more, marketing becomes more targeted in the social media space, right? And as marketers, you get more, much more returns 
on your investment. Um, marketing budget is even going to shift more towards the digital side because everyone is latching on to digital, you know, being more on their mobile devices, you know, and consuming content. So marketing will happen mostly through those devices, you know, and there'll be a shift. I see a shift in budget from the traditional media and more towards the um, the mobile technology platform in terms of in terms of marketing. So it's more returns, um, better returns on investment um, for for the brands that are doing the marketing, and then also more opportunities for platforms um, like um, the social media platforms to be able to earn more money, and also for opportunities to create new platforms as they come in. They will also have their own different marketing metrics that can attract advertisers to be able to also use those platforms um, to be able to reach consumers, you know, more directly. Wow. Mm. Now, my, my little worry, GD, is that um, right now we're beginning to experience what I would call a glut in the market, especially as it concerns, you know, all of the various solutions, you know, that we find. Um, having said that, what would you advise people to do to be able to distill or maybe decipher mm. which is the best for them? Because we're getting everything thrown at us. Because you talked about the platforms okay. so, earlier on, that one needed to choose what platform is best for them. Are they going Instagram? Are they going Facebook? Is it YouTube? Is it uh, Snapshots? Is it Twitter? You know. I guess that's um, what you're asking. How, how do we make out which is best? Hmm. Okay, so to make out to make out which is best, um, the first thing that you have to be able to do is one is to um, is to study the trend, right? You know, look at the trends and do your research, right? Research is very, very, very important. So first, you need to do your research, right? And research each platforms. Um, the second thing you want to do is to do your competitive overview, right? Um, who's my competition, right? I'm selling food, for example. Um, you want to identify who your major competitions are, and you want to know exactly what they're doing. You want to know what those numbers are. When you do those research, um, and you also, you know, do your research around trends, where is the future going towards, um, that would throw some sort of insights to you on what's the best platform to use. Um, you want to know the demography of, of the platform. You know, is TikTok best for you? You need to know exactly what is TikTok. What does it offer? What do you do there? Um, there's a rise of um, Clubhouse, for example, right? And um, do I need to be there? So you need to do your research. What does this platform offer? How many people are there? How many Nigerians are there? You know, also identifying who your primary target audiences are, right? You know, so you identify your primary targets. You do your research, right? Research into the platforms. And then you tie it back into your service product or brand to see, okay, how does this fit into my brand? By the time you do that, you're able to identify what's the best platform for you to go with, as opposed to trying to be everywhere, because you can't be everywhere. You have to be specific, right? You know, and it has to be a platform that supports your type of your type of brand. Okay. Or products. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Jide. The social media, with all of the advantages, you know, is some distraction. And um, the, the money-making aspect of it, um, some people think that um, um, the fraudulent aspect you know, outweighs the advantage. You know? So some people have come on board to ask a question, is social media a, f a fraud? Is it uh, a curse or is it a blessing? Just like we round up in a moment, in a minute, could you give us your thought on it? Is it a blessing or is it a curse? So I think social media is a blessing. Um, it's a blessing. It's, me, it's been more of a blessing than a curse, right? Um, there will always be negative, negative sides to it. But I think it's more of a blessing because it's helped, it's helped raise a lot of people, you know, from poverty, particularly the influencers of today. Um, a few days ago, I read um, an article from a, a popular um, rap artist, you know, who said, um, she was depressed many years ago, um, depressed like about a year ago, you know, because her career wasn't picking up, you know, as expected, you know. But then she decided to go into content creation, you know, and then she created um, some courses that she was good at, you know, created courses, 
sold them through our, our social media platforms. And she said she's made 17 million in less than a year. On that same platform, you find people, you know, who follow wrong, wrong role models who are living fake lifestyles, you know, and then they feel very bad about themselves because they're wondering, where are they seeing this money from and things like that. But mm. there's a lot of fake lifestyle. And then people also get depressed. Sometimes people even commit suicide. But I think it's more of a blessing like because, like I said, it's raised a lot of people, you know, it's made a lot of people bounce back um, for those that had and came down. And it's also helped a lot of people who never had anything become something, you know. I've seen a lot of influencers, you know, started from Twitter and Instagram, going mainstream into into Nollywood, you know, and now they're on Netflix, you know. So I think it's more of a blessing um, than, than a cost, you know. Say 85% of it is good and the other um, um, percent is, is bad. Okay, so that's, that makes it good. Wow, thank you so much, Mr. GJ Ugunleye. At least we have, um, you have given us a choice to either ship in, John, or... Ship out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being an integral part of our conversation on digital aid success with special reference to the social media this morning on the show. Yeah, so Thank let's you get so cracking. Much for having me. Let's get cracking now. Let's, uh, let's go create that audience. Yeah. Very important. Let's learn the strategies and become legitimate success stories. So say that, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so um, social media really is a boom, and it's not a curse. That's what we've heard. Thank you once again, Jide, and um, our love to your, the dream of your life. You know, when I was going through your, your bio, your bio I, I saw that, and I smiled. You know, you're calling your wife the dream, the dream woman, the dream girl of your life and that excited me thank you so much uh, for making us ladies happy with words like that i love to your family your two daughters and your wife thank you so much thank you thank you so much thank all right so much. well pharaoh or and her guests will answer our next set of questions as they take on tech wealth yeah on the show this morning and that's after the break so don't go away there's so much more.